Hello there, I see you've decided to listen to podcast 2. Firstly, thank you for your support. In this podcast, I'll be discussing how literature help can help you find a career and how it can help you throughout the career. Okay, okay. I know you're most probably listening to this like, dang, I knew Judy was insane, but like, this is something else. Look, this is something else, but don't close the podcast just yet and hear me out. Literature seriously helped me realize something very important about my future. And I will be sharing that something with you guys later on in this podcast. First, I need you to think of literature as a verb. To literature is to find the meaning in whatever it is that you're doing. That specific meaning can hold a lesson that can really change your life and your lifestyle. Whether it be how fortunate you are for eating a salad. Because if you actually start thinking about it and contemplate what it took for that food to get on your plate, you'd realize that eating healthy food is a privilege. Most of the farmers that harvest the vegetables and fruit you need for that salad are paid so little to the point where they can't even afford to buy some of their own harvest. I learned to think that way through literature. We are constantly surrounded by meaning and hidden truths. We just need to be willing to open our minds a tad bit and literature. It isn't impossible and trust me, you'll find yourself knowing a flurry of new and amazing things by the end of it. So I'd like to first discuss why literature is important for your future career and save the personal stuff for the last quote-unquote stretch of this podcast. First, we have critical analysis. This skill is highly developed through commenting, interpreting, and suggesting various opinions and views of someone's work. This automatically allows you to write and use extensive vocabulary to express your views. You are further required to analyze written structures, ideas, and themes, and characters building persuasive techniques of writing to convince your own reader of your analytical viewpoint. So, to put it simply, literature helps you persuade others. In the future, career-wise, you'll need to get your opinions and your thoughts across to your peers effectively. You'll also need to be persuasive in your day-to-day life, but the formality needed that comes with the workspace can be achieved through literature. If that doesn't ignite your thirst for literature, then how about this? By reading, you can basically learn how to win your parents' favor without being all sneaky. How does that sound, hmm? Intrigued yet? (laughs) Alright, moving on. We have intellectual curiosity. By, and I quote, reading through the lens to decipher meaning, intent, and the message of the author, you basically extend your thinking to new ideas and possibilities. You also learn more about history, society, and cultures through the reading of different eras. This historical insight and glimpse of the past might stimulate your curiosity to research more or delve further reading within the genre or era, or even your want to learn more about a certain culture. You also gain more knowledge the more you read, giving you a foundation of knowledge to participate in smart conversations with peers. Next up, it strengthens your writing ability. In the future, you're bound to be sitting at a desk writing emails at some point, so I suggest you listen to what literature has to offer. Literature not only expands your vocabulary, it also helps you write articulately and coherently. This means you'll be able to write in clear sentences that flow well and are easily understood using correct paragraph structures and grammar. You can write in sophisticated sentences and adjust your writing for different readers, such as those in the workplace and those outside of the workplace, like family or friends. You will learn how to be concise in your message and present ideas and arguments in a meaningful way. These skills help to strengthen your own communication skills, both written and verbal, for all future job prospects. Imagine walking that job interview. You'd get that job instantly. Next up, it helps you with mental stimulation. Concentrating on words and storylines stimulate your brain and keep it active and alert. It also helps to broaden your thinking as you analyze themes, interpret messages, and discover new words. Research also has shown that learning a brand new language through reading, through literature, can reduce the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. It also helps improve your memory and focus during your literary endeavors. You will recall or remember sequences of events and historical periods helping to enhance your memory. Not only will you pick up new words too, you will also maintain concentration levels and be more attentive. As some written materials will be highly interesting to you as an individual, you will naturally be drawn to reading on and hence gain a better focus. Lastly, it strengthens your, it, it stretches your imagination. 
You'll be forced to think outside of the box and to reach areas of your imagination you may never have thought possible. This will expand your thinking, encourage you to generate new ideas, and indulge in creative conclusions. The creative industry is the fast this grow is the fastest growing industry sector in the economy, giving us a higher chance to propel into a career that requires such skills. Creativity is highly sought after by employers in all sectors to help improve products, services, and processes, and something that cannot be automated by robots. Now, I'd like to talk about how literature helped me somewhat realize what I want to do in the future. Most of my friends already know of the struggle I went through and am still going through. The struggle that has left me thinking until the early hours of the morning. The struggle that has deprived me of sleep. I'll word this struggle in one single question. What do you want to do with your future? As a kid, I wanted to become an archaeologist. It was fun saying such a huge word in the first grade and explaining to people how I'd, fi I'd want to find dinosaurs and mummies. Then, I wanted to be a police officer. After that, I wanted to be a doctor. Yeah, I know, I had the aspirations of a, of a, chi of a child. Thing is, I still do. The Alchemist is a book, and it both taught me a great lesson while also causing me great confusion. Its message is that we have our own personal legacy, a calling that each of us has. It portrays this idea that as kids, we know what our personal legacies are because Dreams aren't tainted by realities or hard truths. I realize that I don't want that. I want to force myself to think of what I want regardless of real life issues. But whenever I try, I end up not knowing. I genuinely don't know what I want to be one day. Um, So I, at some point, I reread Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and I couldn't help but notice how the best things in life come from an adventure or stepping out of your comfort zone. Basically, doing what excites. In other words, I've come to ask myself that maybe the success of my future and my happiness doesn't depend on my job, rather what I do with it and how I seek adventure. So yeah, that was my experience with literature. Um, and now I'm going to be giving you a couple of books that actually, that, are, that actually tint or touch this topic and are pretty helpful if you'd like to give them a read. Alright, so um, I will first discuss The Alchemist. The main theme of, like, well, the two main themes I'll be discussing are the centrality of personal legends and the danger of fear. So let's start with the first theme. According to The Alchemist, personal legends serve as the only means by which an individual can live a satisfying life. In fact, the universe can only achieve perfection if all natural things continuously undergo a cycle of achieving their personal legend evolving into a higher being with a new personal legend and then pursuing that new goal. This concept that the indiv individualistic pursuit of a personal legend exists as life's dominant, perhaps only spiritual demand, lies at the center of the unique theology of the alchemist. As we see when Santiago must give up his flock and leave Fat Fatma, material success and even love pose obstacles to Santiago achieving his personal legend and must be delayed or ignored altogether. Those who put off their personal legends, such as the crystal merchant, suffer regret and fail to experience the wealth and other favors that the universe bestows upon those who follow their personal legends. In the novel, even alchemy, the central symbol of the book, entails coaxing metal to achieve its own personal legend, to turn it to gold. As a result, the idea that all individuals should live in the single pursuit, singular pursuit of their individual dreams emerges as the primary theme of the alchemist. Now, let's talk about the danger of fear. Fear persistently comes up through Santiago's journey as the primary obstacle to Santiago successfully achieving his personal legend. Santiago experiences several forms of fear. A childhood fear of having the gypsy woman interpret his dream. A material fear of losing his wealth by departing to Tangier or by joining the desert caravan, the physical fear of dying in the battle at El Fium, and the spiritual fear that he will fail to turn himself into the wind when the alchemist forces him to try. San Diego's mentors, from Melchizedek to the alchemist, condemn fear by comparing it to materialism, and they describe it as a product of misunderstanding how the universe treats those pursuing their personal legends. 
fear, they suggest, should become irrelevant, even in the face of death, if you faithfully pursue your dreams. Just as those who disregard fear appear as enlightened figures, fear dominates the alchemist's weakest characters. The crystal merchant in particular represents someone who has followed fear to rule his life. Although he wants to make the pilgrimage to Mecca required of every Muslim, he fears that once he's made the trip, he will have nothing else to live for. As a result, he remains deeply unhappy, reinforcing the notion that fear acts as an ob obstacle to a happy and fulfilled life. That's it for The Alchemist. Next up, we have the book Zen and the Art of Mo uh, Motorcycle Repair. So, early in the text, the narrator reveals that he underwent electroconvulsive therapy to treat mental illness. This treatment altered the narr narrator so deeply that he regards his post-therapy self as an entirely different person. The narrator strictly separates his present-day self from his past identi identity and refers to the later, um, uh, to the latter, sorry, in the third person, using the name Phaedrus. He is, and I quote, a mind divided against itself. The, narr the narrator's conflicted identity complicates his relationship to his son. Chris is too young to fully grasp his father's mental turmoil, but he does notice a personality change once the narrator returns from treatment. When Chris laments his father's altered persona, the narr narr narrator observes, and I quote, I can imitate the father he's supposed to have, but subconsciously, at the quality level, he sees through it and knows his real father isn't here, end quote. The narrator, fe fe the, narrator the narrator feels obligated to replicate a role he fulfilled when he was a completely different person. Even though such a replication is impossible, he sees his paternal discontinuity as one of the foot causes of his son's anxiety. This divided identity is especially discordant when considered in the book's larger context. Through his, um, through his narration, the narrator strives to resolve the problems that arise when the world is intellectualized in terms of opposing duality. However, all the while, the narrator ma maintains a strict division between his past self and his present persona that he refuses to consider them as the same person. Finally, at the end of the book, the narrator acknowledges this dilemma. The biggest duality of all, the duality between me and Phaedrus, remains unfaced. Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance details Vaderus' attempts to provide a, a unifying philosophical framework that explains the universe in all of its physical, scientific, and subjective manifestations. While this new system is a fascinating one, the narrator's psychological disunity is a constant reminder that Vaderus' philosophical system has not yet pre pre been perfectly actualized and put into practice. So... Aren't we all just individuals trying to find re our own identity in this hectic wor world career-wise? Don't we all have hobbies and interests that continuously clash with our want for money and our, wa our, uh, and our want to provide for our family? Well, that's it for this podcast. I hope you all a blessed day. So go make like a tree and leaf. Go read. <laughs>